Hey guys, Jake Whitfield here. I'm a Hoist Gracie Black Belt, a professional MMA fighter. Here with my student, Steven Thigpen, who's an amateur MMA fighter. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a, a good technical breakdown of Hoist's performance against Ken Shamrock on Friday night. Um, I've seen some other breakdowns that uh, have some good points and some bad points to them, but I haven't seen anybody that really covered everything that happened in the fight. Um, so the very first thing, the most important thing that set the tone for the entire fight was the stance of the fighters. So when Steven and I face each other, Ken was in pretty much a conventional boxing stance with the left foot in the front, you know, kind of weight on the front foot, looking to throw those big punches. And Hoyce went, first of all, to a southpaw stance, but also Hoyce was in a jujitsu stance. So whereas with a boxing stance, my head's a little bit more forward, Hoyce is standing a little bit more upright and keeping the weight more in the middle so he was able to kind of shift his weight. Hoyce did this specifically to counter Shamrock's overhand right. Okay, because the, the worry was that if, 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 if Hoyce tried to throw the left jab, that overhand right could come over the top. So by switching the stance, the overhand right becomes not even an option because of the distance between us, okay? And that brings me to the second huge point of the fight, which was the distance management by Hoyce, okay? Every punch, every kick, every strike has a certain distance that it needs to be effective. And what Hoyce did was he denied Ken that distance. This is basic Jiu-Jitsu 101. Jiu-Jitsu 101, the strategy, is to either be too close for the guy to hit you effectively or too far away. So kind of the conventional boxing distance is right about here. Because from this point, either one of us can take one step and land a punch. Hoist was fighting at this distance, which is an extra step. Now, to give Ken credit, Ken attempted to adjust the hoist's stance and to do the right thing. In a conventional boxing matchup, if you have the same leg, the mirrored leg forward, the person whose front foot is on the outside has an advantage because it allows the punch to come down the middle. So Ken was trying to do the right thing. And what you'll see a lot of times is that when you have this type of a mirrored stance or what's called an open guard position, they end up, I step on the outside, Steven steps on the outside, I step on the outside, Steven steps on the outside, and eventually you run into the cage or into the, the ropes or whatever the structure is you're fighting in. And what you don't want to do is circle into the power hand. So if I'm trying to get away and I come up on this angle right here, I get hit very easily. So what Hoist was doing was, first of all, step back a little bit. He was fighting from a greater distance, and then whenever Ken did attempt to get that dominant angle, Hoist was circling away at the back angle. So instead of going directly sideways or this way, he was moving his body the farthest they could get away from Ken over here. And so that's why you saw they were repeatedly moving in a circle with Ken doing the right thing, trying to get his foot on the outside, but never in range to land a punch. Hoist further helped himself out here by using his kicks. Hoist is very tall, he has very long legs, had a huge reach advantage. And he used that very effectively. This once again goes back to the stance. In uh, more of a, a, a Muay Thai type stance, you stand very square to the person. And this gives you a lot of power in your kicks. But what it requires is that for me to kick with my front leg, I have to take a step or a switch. And by hoist standing in more of a sideways position, he was more able to shift his weight and pick that front leg up without having to take those steps. Now, usually, 
the side on stance has the problem of the low kick to the front leg. Go ahead, the low kick to the front leg. However, first, Ken Shamrock has never thrown an effective low kick. Second, any time that Ken did manage to get into a range that he could be comfortable from, Hoist used the kicks. He used the lead leg pizon, the side kick. It's called the pizon in Portuguese, which is bringing the leg up and throwing it in. He landed several effective kicks to the body, touched the front leg a couple times. He was also using the, the lead leg round kick. He was just taking a tiny little setup step here, throwing up to the head. He landed a couple slapping kicks on the legs. And he was also using the front kick, and especially the front kick off the back leg. The front kick off the back leg is a very dangerous kick. We've seen lots of knockouts from that kick. And so it's something that the only really, the way to deal with it is you have to get out of the way. And so when Hoist would throw that back leg, Ken would have to back up. And so once again, Hoist is not getting hit. What Ken had to do in this situation is Ken had to throw the straight punches. But Ken is, even though Ken's a very experienced fighter, and he's very strong, and he hits very hard, Ken is not a straight puncher. His, his, he's not a technical boxer. So even though his corner was yelling at him to throw down the middle, step, in, step on that outside angle, and throw that straight right hand, he didn't have the training necessarily to do that, and Hoist was frustrating him by his footwork and his kicks to manage the distance. In fact, Ken threw one right hand that almost landed. So we were here, Ken did throw the right hand and almost landed. And Hoist tried to go in for the clinch, but when he grabbed him, Ken just kind of had a really good base and kind of pushed and they came back out. Okay? But then Hoist had the timing. So the second time, Ken didn't even get to throw the punch. Hoist was using the kick, using this one here, throwing up towards the head, and he actually just flinched, and Hoist came in. And initially, he overhooked on this side. But when he overhooked on this side, Ken's right hand went to the head. And so then, Hoist's right hand came to the head. Ken actually landed the first knee from this position, the right knee to the body, and Hoist came right back with his. So one and one right here. And as soon as that first knee hit, Ken's arm came down to try to defend the knee, this one, and they ended up holding the wrist right here. This is where the controversial strike happened. Hoist, think, I, I think he threw another knee with the right leg, and then the left knee comes in and made contact on Ken's lower abdomen. Hoist stepped back. Ken showed no reaction. Hoist brought the right leg back and landed the right knee to Hoist, uh, excuse me, to Ken's temple. And this is where Ken dropped and his hands went down. At this point, as soon as Ken's body turned, Hoist wrapped him up with two hands on the body, right here. And right here, Hoist executed a beautiful, basic rear trip takedown. His left foot was on the outside, lined up with Ken's feet. The right leg come across, and he sits down. As soon as he executed the takedown, and he sat down, Ken's hands are still down here. Hoist stepped right over into the technical mount position. Heel in the hip, the other knee on the floor. And it's from this position that Hoy started throwing the hammer fist and the referee stopped the fight. And, uh, and then of course, after the fight was already stopped, Hoy was already the winner of the fight, then Ken became upset by what he perceived to be a groin shot. Um, obviously, I'm not 
I'm not in Ken Shamrock's head. I didn't feel what he felt. But when I talked to Hoyce about the fight yesterday, Hoyce told me that his knee, he never felt Ken Shamrock's cup. And if you watch the replay, Hoyce's knee lands high on the shorts next to the right hip. If you look at an anatomy chart, this is the lower abdomen. The groin is between the legs. The lower abdomen is up here. But what happens is, is that, that uh, in boxing, there's a rule that says no low blows. So in boxing, a punch to the hip, a punch to the leg, is an illegal strike. In MMA, the rules don't say that whatsoever. The rules say no attacking the groin. Hoist did not first intentionally try to try to throw any type of an Ill illegal technique. Second, Hoist didn't hit an illegal target. In boxing, the shorts themselves are used to determine an illegal or legal strike. So if you hit anywhere on the other person's shorts, it's an illegal strike. MMA has no such rule. So where Hoyce hit was up almost on the hip flexor, just on the inside of the hip and the lower abdomen. And this is a point that there's, it, there's no, there's really no way to tense these muscles. It's very hard to work these muscles. So they're very soft. And so that's where Hoyce's knee landed. So they were in this position right here, hand on the head, holding the wrist, and Hoyce threw the knee. Boom. Ken showed no reaction whatsoever. In fact, I used a stopwatch and I went back and it was 1.91 seconds before Ken showed any reaction to the alleged groin strike. And that reaction only occurred after the second knee to the head. And remember, this wasn't a combination. Hoist didn't do, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see the ties, you know, tie boxers that kind of have this little skip thing going on. That's not what happened in the fight. Hoist threw one knee, boom, stepped back, and threw a separate technique. Ken's knees buckled from the knee to the head, and then he grabbed and Hoist wrapped him up. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm not at all alleging that Ken Shamrock was faking or that he's a, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything negative about Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock's a legend that deserves to have all the respect in the world. However, on Friday night, he was simply not prepared to deal with what Hoist was doing. And Hoist was doing the classical jujitsu. I've read, um, a lot of different places saying uh, there's no strikes in jiu-jitsu and that you know if, if Hoist won, it was Muay Thai. That's, that's patently, patently false. Grandmaster Alio, Hoist's father, had a 40 lesson self-defense course that's available on DVD if you wanna buy it. And it includes the, the defensive kicks. It includes knee strikes to the head and the body. It includes elbow strikes, head butts, as well as takedowns and all of these things. So Hoist was fighting in a very traditional Alio Gracie Jiu Jitsu manner and did it perfectly. And, and just bottom line is that even though Ken Shamrock's a warrior and Ken Shamrock's a legend, on Friday night he was not prepared for Hoist or for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu.